I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and let us have some good time together. Today we have a very important issue to share with you. Uh, but before we start, we have our friend here. His name is Palestine. A lot of esteem he have. He made a comment just now, he said. Well, <clears throat> uh, in the book of Revelation, the Muslims, by the way, they are expert not only in their book, they are expert in their book. But the second you ask them a question, they flee with the flying carpet of Solomon. So this is Palestine, a lot of stain coming from you, my friend. He is saying, the followers of the gospel should not, should only judge by the gospel. And God gave authority to the Quran in five. 48 okay time to focus and i find it very funny that the book of revelation is speaking about the messiah as god and you approve it and you are saying that the quran approve it because the verse you are quoting for me my friend it says that this verse the book which is given to muhammad approve our book and that is very silly because all of us we knew that everything in your book is opposing our book so how your book agree with our book? But that will something topic we'll talk about later. So welcome, Mr. Stein. Now we go to something more important. Actually, uh, you know, as long as you mention this verse, just to show you how stupid this verse is. As long as he throws some stain, well, okay. Let us see. We hear always the Muslim they keep saying, inshallah, right? Okay, well, let us see how this thing functions as religion. The second you start reading the Quran, the same second you notice that this is a religion based in a word that says inshallah but Allah he is not exist to make any of his will happen and this is an example when this guy he said to us chapter 5 verse number uh, 48 if we read it we will die laughing because it says that Allah he sent the book but Muhammad never received a book <laughs> and the Muslims agree with that and the Muhammad he received verses by verses so if the if the statement is true that Allah he sent the book that's mean all the stories of Muhammad is a, a fabrication so either it's a verses or it was a book was it a book Muhammad never received a book and then it says confirming the scriptures that came before it this is false translation it says Musaddiqan lima believing in what is between his hands so the Christian or Jews books absolutely are true so here Muhammad again getting all the Muhammad and busted by saying that our book is corrupted. 
because how you can believe in it, which is between his hands. And I challenge the Muslim to say it doesn't say that's a B. It says Lima Bani that you can just copy those words and pause them in Google Translation and you will see what I'm talking about. And then here it says, if you continue reading, and this is a Muslim translation, it says, if Allah will, or, or will he would like to make you one nation. But Allah, he wanted to, he decided, which means Allah, he decided <laughs> to divide you. <laughs> and the Muslim, they translated it as, to test you. I mean, this is the most funny, stupid thing ever. So that's mean the Muslim, they believe they are a nation, and they believe the Christian are a nation, the Jews are a nation, the Hindus are a nation, the Buddhas are a nation, and Allah made us those nations so he can test us, which mean, if you are a Buddha, Allah made you Buddha. If you are a Christian, Allah made you Christian. If you are a Muslim, Allah made you Muslim. <laughs> so do you understand, my friend, why I said a lot of stain? Now let's go to the topic. Imagine yourself a person who live in Indonesia. You know, Indonesia is a beautiful country. We have to agree, you know. But Indonesia is, as a country, depend on farming, a greenery, you know. For sure, there is some income from tourism, but the whole country is a farming country. What if I tell you, Indonesian, that if you, are, if you really follow the true teaching of Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, the most wonderful man in history, the one who is no one like him, the one who is named written in the chair of Allah as a graffiti, because Allah, he is the first a graffiti person. What if I say to you that the Prophet of Allah was the first one to come with solution to make you all rich, never hungry, never poor, and you can really uh, accomplish every dream you have. All those are pictures from Indonesia. And look, this is Indonesian Muslim woman. And she looks very happy, you know? For sure she's happy. She have a prophet of Allah. And if you have the prophet of Allah, you will get 80 whip in your back if you do uh, uh, prostitution, or sorry, if you do adultery. Uh, but if you are a sheikh, nobody will beat you. <laughs> so what the prophet, he said, it can solve all the problem of the Indonesian people, you know? I mean, there is a lot of things you people do not know. Prophet of Allah is the most uh, amazing person. Uh, look at this with me. Oh, we, we search Indonesian beach, we got uh, women in the bikini. Let us skip that. All right. I mean, what happened with this website? <laughs> okay, Indonesian. <laughs> Let us search for something else. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's try something else. All right, maybe that will do the job. So if you look at this picture here, you will see Indonesian people. They are, you know, fruits, vegetation. This is a market, you know. But did you ask yourself one day where this fruit coming from? Where this vegetation came from? Like, does it come from the sky? Does it come from the radiator? Or there is a farmer, he do work hard to make those things available for us, those who live in cities. In other way, those who live in farms and do farming, in fact, they are the one who feed the world. It's not the one who make iPhone. That is the truth. The one who feed you is not the one who made a computer. Is not the one who made a car. Is not the one even he generated electricity. It is the one who is a farmer. What if I say to you that the prophet he made a solution? If you follow it, Indonesian, you will never go hungry again. And let me show you the solution. And I hope you will listen to me, and you will take the advice of a prophet Muhammad seriously. 
beside other serious advice. As an example, the Prophet, he want all Muslims to be happy. As an example, you can go to a woman and you can ask her to sleep with you three days, three nights. And that is uh, not prostitution. That is just a fun. It's called muta. Muta means pleasure. So Prophet of Allah, from the beginning of his time, he wanted you to have a pleasure in your life. How is pleasuring it is that, you know, how, how boring even to have a wife and she is in your face every day. Three days and that's it, you change her. So the Prophet of Allah, he understand the nature of a human being, that he like to change, you know, and he like to see nicer things, like your wife, Umm um Muhammad, you know, she is there for five, six years and now she is in order. Just let her go. Get a woman, Umm um Mahmoud. Umm Mahmoud for three days. She got paid, she leave. There's no responsibility and it's fun. But the Prophet, he come with more solutions. As an example, he is the first one who, like me, myself, I'm worried about getting married because I don't want my son to look like me. And that really is ugly. And ah, man, no way. But after I learned from Prophet Muhammad that the one who comes first is the one who decides the gender and the look of the baby, now I feel so comfortable and the Prophet, he solved my problem. So all what I need to do if I get married in order not to have a son look like me, I'm not going to come first. As simple as that. And then my wife, she will come first, and then my son will not look like me. Bingo. See? So Prophet of Allah, he solved tons of problems. One of them, you don't look like me, as an example. Now, for sure, all of you look good. You know, I'm just giving you an example. Like, my, maybe my, my situation is different from your situation, but you understand my, my situation now, right? So now the Prophet of Allah, he come with different situation where we can really live a fancy life. So Prophet of Allah, he said, that anyone he will have any tools for ugly culture in his house Allah will curse this house and look how beautiful this statement is the Prophet of Allah he don't want Indonesian to work in agriculture Egyptian Indonesian Sudan Tunisia Morocco don't don't even touch it and if you have a tool like those in your house, Allah will destroy you and will destroy your household. Another way, those tools can bring curse. Not can, it's a must. Muhammad, he knew what he's saying. And as you know, this is Sahih. So a Muslim might say to you, oh, this is not Sahih. It's say here, Sahih. I like the word Sahih, by the way. You know, I have a friend, his name is Sahih Christian. I don't know if you know him. So it says Sahih, and this is even in Sahih al-Bukhari, which is wonderful. In al-Bukhari, he says, that narrated by uh, Abu Potato, he said, uh, I saw some ag uh, agriculture equipment, and I and said, I heard the Prophet saying, there's no house in which this equipment enters, except that Allah will cause humiliation to enter it. Actually, I heard that the reason Trump, he lost the election, uh, or he lost the White House if he did not lose election because they found in his house a tool for farming in the White House. You know, uh, his wife, she liked to do some farming. She liked to plant some tomato, potato. You know, they are poor people, as you know. So they like to grow in the, grow, like in the yard of the White House some tomato so they can feed themselves. And, you know, Trump is really a big guy and he had to eat and they, they, they didn't have money. So she brought the agriculture, you know, equipment to her house from Home Depot, and she started growing some potatoes, tomatoes. And then we know what happened to Trump. Trump now, he don't live in the White House, and the one who's eating the tomato, of which is grown by the wife of Trump, is Joe Biden. This is a true story, by the way. So brother, if you have any agriculture equipment, you need to get rid of it immediately. It's dangerous. The whole world, we should, we should not work in agriculture. Like, you know, in Ukraine, you know, or in Russia, they are number one who produce wheat. Who need wheat? Let us, let us be real. The whole world do not need wheat. It's true that Egypt, uh, uh, Jordan, Syria, all Middle Eastern countries, they, 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 they heavily need wheat to live, uh, and they are going to struggle badly if the war continue, and even might they go in hunger. Uh, but... <sighs> Still, we can stop eating wheat and we can switch to cake. Because agriculture 
equipment is going to bring a disaster for us if we have it. You know, when you see those big machines, uh, you know, and uh, you know those are stupid things to uh, to do farming and etc. Those people do not know how much dangerous those things can bring to us because Allah will be so angry. And here, by the way, when somebody says to you that the Prophet of Allah is not wise, he is not wonderful, you have all the reasoning to understand that those people who say that about Prophet Muhammad because they are jealous. Now, if you want to understand really why Muhammad, he said those things, uh, the answer is very simple. Muhammad, he wants fighters, he don't want farmers. Muhammad was a thief, not a civil person. Muhammad, he want to conquer and steal the money of other people. He want not the Muslim to do farming, he want other nations to do farming and he steal their food. Muhammad simply is a big fat thief. He's evil, he's ugly, and if we follow his advices, we, all of us, we will struggle and we will die from hunger. Because imagine if everybody, and this is telling you now, who in the world want to follow Prophet Muhammad? Nobody. Because following this idiot means death. Following this false criminal means death. Muhammad, he said those statements because at that time his army was victorious and they do not need to do farming. And Muhammad, he wanted to prevent his people from living peaceful life, growing their own food, growing their own animals, living like every human being, be productive, do something good, feed others. Muhammad, he want you to be a criminal. Every word in this, in those, in this sentence here. And as you see, the Muslim cannot say to us, "This is daif." Every word here proves to us that this is Satan. Satan, he don't want us to do farming. He don't want us to be peaceful. He don't want us to settle in a house, our house, our land. He wants us to go and steal the, the land of others. There is no question in my mind for a second that Muhammad is a satanic man. If there is any Muslim have an objection? If there is any Muslim have an objection? Anyone have an objection? Focus with us, Mr. Palestine. Focus. So, this is why, like this guy, he called himself Palestine. Omar al Khattab, he came to Jerusalem to occupy Jerusalem so he can take the wealth of the Christian and the Jews, as a chapter 9, verse 29 says. Go and kill them, attack them, so you can get the blonde girls, as the interpretation says. So he is a thief, not only he want to take the food from us, not only he want to take money, he want to take even women. And because they are obsessed with the blonde women, white women, he said it clearly, attack the Roman and get the blondie. So uh, I challenge any Muslim to refute what I'm saying. And what you will say now, it doesn't say that, CP. Let me refute you, CP. Here it says, Haddathana. Abdullah ibn Yusuf. Yusuf, he said from Abdullah. Abdullah, he said from Al-Himsi. Al-Himsi, he said from Ziyad. Ziyad, he said from Abi Imama. Abi Imama, he said that he saw and he heard the Prophet. Now everybody knows that Ibn Umama, he is a Qumama, which means a garbage. What the heck? I mean, this is Sahih al-Bukhari and this is Sahih. Suddenly, it is false they will find any excuse to take anything embarrassment or bring embarrassment to the false prophet. And if you see here, actually, if you go, this is the same hadith, but different book. It says here in Arabic, Sahih.
So my friend, we have to get serious and we have to learn that the Prophet of Allah, he is the best for mankind, especially when he taught us how we can go and capture people and put the chain around their neck for he want freedom for us. You know, you might think that the Prophet, he want really to enslave you. It's true the Prophet, he have a lot of slaves. But the fact too, that he had sex with them. And this is telling you how nice he is. Because if he is not nice, simply he will not <clears throat> if you. Only nice Prophet, he do that. It's an honor for those women that the Prophet, he did boom, boom to them. It's an honor. Imagine the <clears throat> of the Prophet getting <clears throat> into that woman. Who is that woman? She's no one. She's just been captured. And now the Prophet, he is giving her the honor. It's hard to imagine. Hard to imagine how beautiful it is to be raped to be put in chain around your neck. By who? By the best nation of mankind. Look what the prophet, he says. He says, you are the best of people ever raised for up for benefit of mankind. Did you see the word benefit? I mean, did you see the word benefit? So when those kuffar, they say to you, Islam is about slavery. Islam is about killing. That's a lie. Islam is about the benefit of mankind. And how the Muslim deserve the benefit of mankind in chapter 3, verse 110 in the Quran? The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chain round their necks till they embrace Islam. Allahu Akbar, brother. It's so beautiful. Sometimes I feel I want to have tears. It's so beautiful. It's so touching. And yet those Christians, they lie. And they say the Prophet of Allah is a bad person. Tomorrow we will be live again. Join us. We are trying to make short videos so people they can easily download them and share them. And they will see you soon tomorrow again. I hope by tomorrow none of you will have agriculture equipment in his house. Indonesian, are you listening? Please, by tomorrow, you should get rid of all the equipment of agriculture. Otherwise, my brother, Allah will curse you. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I heard somebody, he is a farmer. Allah, he said his angels, he walked by his house, he saw he have some hammers and some uh, ox and some stuff. Right away, Allah curse him. Right away, immediately. And now his name, I, I don't know what to do his name, but I have to. His name is Joe Biden. The guy, I don't even remember his name since then. You think he is Joe Biden's wife? This is what happened to you when you don't follow the command of Allah and you don't take advice of Prophet Muhammad seriously. So please get rid of your equipment before it's too late. You don't want to end like Joe Biden. No way. That would be very sad indeed. All of us, we hope, happy ending. I mean, this sentence is very sentence, sensitive, sensitive. Happy ending. Yeah, like you go to heaven, Allah give you a lot of versions. Happy ending, you know? You start doing the happy ending stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, this is what Islam is about. It's about happy ending. Just follow the Prophet's step. Put chain around the necks of people. For you are the benefit of mankind. You are the best of mankind. Stop doing farming, so every one of us we can die and kill each other. We we will eat each other, brother. We will be like zombie. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love it. I watch those movies sometimes. <laughs> Lovely, huh? And then, brother, if you have a problem about who is the son will look like, just don't come first. Follow the step of the prophet and the advices of the prophet, and you will have a wonderful life. Thank you very much for listening. I hope now we made some change in your life, and tomorrow is going to be a better day for you after listening and learning about Prophet Muhammad's advice and his wisdom. What a dumb.
I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him, 